Hey, it's me again. In this video, we're going to show you the vital importance of the gallbladder. Now, the gallbladder is probably the most ignored, downgraded part of your body. Doctors say you don't need it. It's an extra organ from birth, but it's the most common thing that I find. Uh, and if you have a gallbladder problem, we need to show you how to reverse it and undo it. Okay, so we're going to show you what it is, what it means if there's a problem, how to identify the problem, what causes the problem, and then what to do about it. Okay, so the first thing is that you have this liver right here. It's three and a half pounds the size of a football. It's on the right side, upper underneath the right rib cage. And then it has a little tube that goes into a little sac um, called the gallbladder. So the gallbladder is just a sac. It holds something called bile. Bile is made by the liver and bile is like the detergent that breaks down the grease. It's a fluid that the liver makes to help dissolve, dissolve fat. So when you eat fat, it signals the gallbladder to squeeze and contract this stored bile into the small intestine so you can actually break down dietary fat into smaller particles. Now it does get help from the pancreas. So the pancreas makes a bunch of enzymes, so you got this bile and enzymes that start to go in there and start dissolving the fats into tiny little particles so you can use those fatty acids, um, which are very beneficial to your health, um, to build tissue, cells, brain, nerve, etc. So let's just take a look at some of the cool things that the bile will do. It will help you absorb fat-soluble vitamins. What's a fat-soluble vitamin? It's a very unique type of vitamin that has the capacity to be stored in fat and the capacity to go through the cell wall. A lot of the fat soluble vitamins, especially vitamin D and vitamin A, act at, like hormones to your body. Uh, so they're not really even like a vitamin, they're like hormones. So they're very, very um, uh, important in tool to create a lot of effects. I'm going to show you that. But um, when you eat vegetables, vegetables don't have, they have the pre-vitamins. So they have a pre-vitamin A, pre-vitamin K. A true vitamin A active form is only in animal products. So when you eat vegetarian, vegetables, and things like that, you're only getting a very small percentage, maybe 4% of that vitamin that converts to the active form. But here's the thing. If you're deficient in vitamin A, you'll get night blindness. It's hard to see in the dark. You get dry eyes, dry skin. A lot of skin issues uh, will happen from that. So that's a vitamin A deficiency. But see, if you have this, it could be not that you're not necessarily like not eating vitamin A. It could be because you don't have the bile to digest the vitamin A that you're eating already. So we have to see the chain of a reaction that occurs all the way across and identify what the problem is, okay? So if the person's like eating a lot of butter, for example, that's in vitamin A, that's vitamin, tons of vitamin A and butter, and, but they still have like night blindness to dry eyes, then we know we have to add the bile, okay? So it's just a way of kind of figuring things out. Now let's take a look at vitamin D3. Like who's deficient in D3? Like half the population. What, is, what happens when you get deficiency of vitamin D3? You get depression, especially in the winter. It's called uh, the blues. Um, also you have chronic fatigue syndrome is a vitamin D deficiency. Flu, you get flu symptoms because the immune factors. A lot of autoimmune diseases uh, can kick in from low vitamin D because the immune factor. If you take a look at uh, when does the flu kick in, it's usually in the fall when there's no sun, right? A lot of issues, even polio occurred more in the fall. A lot of viruses come out of remission in the fall and it's because of this vitamin D drop after the summer. So you got the flu, achy joints. Well, that could be symptoms of the flu too. Bone pain, that could be symptoms of the flu. Uh, high blood pressure, because um, one of the re remedies for high blood pressure is taking vitamin D. Um, respiratory, like asthma. Kids that have asthma don't have asthma symptoms if they're out in the sun. Allergies and asthma. Psoriasis, that's the skin issue. Um, a lot of vitamin D will help this. Muscle cramps in calves, so you need vitamin D. Why would that be affected? Because it transports, it helps you absorb calcium in the intestine. So vitamin D helps you absorb calcium into the blood from the small intestine. So it allows the increased absorption of calcium by 20 times. If you didn't have vitamin D, you would have 20 times less calcium. So that's what vitamin D does. So if you have these symptoms, 
but you're taking vitamin D, it, it could be because you don't have enough bile. All right? Now, vitamin K2, that's different than vitamin K1. All right, vitamin K1 is about clotting. If you have bruising, you could be deficient in vitamin K1, but K2 is different. Vitamin K2 is a transport, um, calcium transport vitamin. So when you're deficient in K2, you get a lot of calcium that builds up in the soft tissues of the body. So you get arthritis, tendonitis, bursitis. You get calcium in the arteries. That's why the blood pressure goes up. That's why you get heart attacks. Calcium on the eyes, that's a cataract. Kidney stones, strokes, why? Because there's calcium and placking in the brain, arteries of the brain. Uh, Alzheimer's, because of the calcium buildup. So also deficient in K2 will cause you to have osteoporosis because vitamin D3 increases the calcium, but it doesn't tell it where to go. K2 takes that calcium and drives it where it should go, out of where it should not be. So, so many people have this calcium that's plugging up their entire body. As they get older, they, they go into a stone. Um, the huge uh, recommendation for the elderly and most of the baby boomers was to avoid fat, right? <sighs> They're gonna starve the body of K2. Vitamin K2 is in butter, eggs, it's in all the grass-fed beef, it's in grass-fed uh, animal products, okay? So, look at that. I mean, look at how many problems occur because someone doesn't have enough bile. Um, it's crazy. So you really need to make sure these are in the diet and make sure this works. Now, let's take a look at the thyroid. 80% of the thyroid function is converted through the liver. So T4 is converted through the liver, and T4 just represents the number of iodine molecules um, to that thyroid hormone. So the bile strips off an iodine into T3. T3 is the active form of thyroid hormone. So T4 doesn't do anything in the body unless it converts to T3. And guess what? 80% of it occurs through the bile ducts in the liver. So here the person has, is taking thyroid medication, they don't have a thyroid gland anymore, or they have thyroid symptoms, dry hair, loss of eyebrows, slow metabolism. But in fact, it could be they don't have enough bile to convert T4 to T3. So we have to look at the broad spectrum. Some other symptoms to identify low bile would be constipation. Why? Because bile acts as a lubricant to your colon. Bloating, burping, belching is a sign of uh, congested gallbladder. Right shoulder pain because there's a nerve on the right side that goes all the way up to the right shoulder and it could be the neck, it could be headaches, right shoulder, right scapula, right trap, anywhere on the right. It can even pinch a nerve here and cause pain down the right arm. Uh, also, another sign would be not satisfied after you eat. So here you are, you eat a food, but you still need a little something, something. Um, it just doesn't really do anything. It's because you don't have the bile to absorb the fatty acids to pull them into the brain. This is huge. This is important. Okay. So now what would be the cause of a bile problem? One, is high levels of cortisol. That's from the adrenal. That's a stress hormone. So stress can shut down your bile ducts. And that's the duct that comes through here. Estrogen can do it. That's why a lot of women uh, end up with a gallbladder problem after pregnancy because the high levels of estrogen that can occur. Uh, so estrogen could destroy the gallbladder too. And even from hormone replacement therapy, birth control pills, uh, or just having high estrogen, which we'll cover in another video, which is basically like your period is heavy, crampy, irregular periods, that's high estrogen, and that will block the gallbladder. Low-fat diets will cause gallbladder problems. So, you know, vegetarians that go um, off all saturated fats, well then, there's nothing to trigger the gallbladder, so it dries up. So you don't have any bile, and you can't digest fat, so that's why you're, a lot of vegetarians have dry skin, they're just dry inside and out. Um, it's because of the low fat. So we want to increase the healthy fats. Soy protein isolates. That's in all the diet foods. That's in all the prepackaged soy uh, patties that you get Morning Star. It's in a lot of the um, diets. The um, uh, what's the diet out there? Medifast, Nutrisystem. Uh, what else? Ideal Protein. They all use soy protein isolates. Cheap, crappy protein. Real hard in the gallbladder. It'll cause tumors in the liver and destroy the gallbladder. Um, but other than that, it's perfectly fine. That was my dry sense of humor. Junk food will also do it. Okay, so 
that is uh, the significance of liver. Now, now that you know the effects of what that will create, if you have a problem and how to identify it, now what do we do about it? Number one, we're going to show you in the next part how to do acupressure to the gallbladder and the pancreas. So you're going to do that to yourself. You're going to change your diet. You're going to get off the sugar and have healthy fats to start triggering this combination of acupressure. There are some great um, supplements to support to give you more bile because you're deficient to get the ball rolling because see bile is recycled and if you lose it sometimes it takes a long time to get it back so this will give you the bile back purify bile salt so you can start using it if you had your gallbladder out then you definitely need the gallbladder formula because the gallbladder formula has bile salts it has enzymes from the pancreas called lipase to digest the fats so we have pancreatic support and gallbladder support right together and another thing for the stomach called betaine hydrochloride to help the stomach, the gallbladder, the pancreas helps lubricate the colon. It's the ultimate gallbladder support formula. And you would take, start off with taking one at breakfast, okay? And then see how it goes and then take one for at lunch if you need it and one for dinner until you feel really less bloated in there. So this is really important. If you take too much bile, you might have a little diarrhea. So if you have diarrhea, you should never take this right here because that could be could mean when they um, let's say you took your gallbladder out the tube could be too big now and it just drains right out even though you might you know your liver is producing it like crazy it's just going through at a higher level so anyway you just want to use the um, that as an indicator to know that you're taking either too much um, but nor more, normally people will be fine with that yeah, the only uh, contraindication let's say you take gallbladder formula and you get heartburn what that means, since gallbladder formula is very alkaline, uh, and you're, let's say your stomach is already too alkaline, then it could like create some heartburn because your body's trying to compensate. If that happens, then you would stop taking this and switch to something called betaine hydrochloride. And, and that's just a side note that's rare, but you might need to do that because betaine hydrochloride is just acid and that will actually get your stomach more acid. So then you don't really need this because it'll one of the triggers for um, gallbladder is stomach acid being very acid. So if you don't have enough acid in your stomach, it means that you're never going to basically release the bile. So if you take the betaine hydrochloride, that should solve that problem. But don't worry about that unless you have that problem. Cruciferous food. Why? Because the liver does really well on cruciferous food products. I have a supplement called cruciferous food that you can take that actually has all of the cruciferous and some serious vegetables to help um, rotor rooter and clean the liver out and restore liver function. So that's a real, uh, something that I uh, recommend on a regular basis. And of course, eat, the, eat those foods as well. Now, to take the D3 and the K2, um, I have a lot of people on those two right now, uh, especially to clean up all the intracellular or organ soft tissue calcium in the body. It's good for so many issues and also to prevent strokes. Uh, personally, I take 4D3 and 4K2 every morning. Uh, sometimes, depending if you have these problems, you can take a little bit more. I would take a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, and then if you don't have these problems, let's say you're, you're a little younger and you don't have an issue, just take one of each. Um, they're already built in. This is 10,000 IUs, and this is the right ratio for K2. Um, some people freak out because, oh my gosh, that's high vitamin D3. Well, 10,000 international units is only one m milligram of D3, so it's really not that much. And then the last thing is the DHA. The DHA is a healthy fat that's really good for memory and Alzheimer's. And I also take that one because of the, what it does to your brain. It actually fixes your brain. It's really good for sharpness and that's a really important one. Then if you take the gallbladder, you can really emulsify and break that down. So I hope now you have a more awareness of what's happening with the gallbladder, the consequences of having a gallbladder issue, and then you can think backwards of the symptoms of this, the causes, and then what to do. So in the ne next section, we're going to show you the acupressure. So now we know you'll know how to do the acupressure to your own gallbladder and pancreas. You know what foods you'll be on with the eating, and you know what nutrition you need to do to undo it. Okay, so I hope that helps.